leads the McCain Challenger yeah. listings at the moment, along with Andy Vernon. They're tying. And at the end of this, then Andy Vernon will certainly come out the winner uh, on the basis of how it's going at the moment. But there's another big gap, and that's uh, Nielsen Hall of, Hartford, uh, uh, of Hertfordshire leading that uh, chasing group. You know, sure, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking that the, the Steve Vernon option um, for being added to the, perhaps the first four that finish here, five maybe, is looking like a plausible one for the selectors. I mean, who knows? It, it depends how he runs where he's racing in Belgium today. I, it's a high-risk thing not to have raced yep. here. But as the gaps open up and the possibility exists that he could strengthen the team and persuade Vernon that they've got a shot at the bronze medal or something of that kind, certainly Farah, uh, the way he's looking here, he, he, he's back on form, and if another two weeks got him a little bit sharper and a little bit track sharp, you know, it's not a bad side that, that Britain could field in this. Well, I was impressed with his great south run last year on the roads when he ran, what, 46 uh, minutes plus, I think it was. It was a very, very quick, 46, 47, something in that region. It was very, very quick. And uh, really, on the basis of that, you felt, my goodness me, this guy is going well. Then he had the problem. Then he had this little bit of a hiccup in the way in which he ran in the Europeans and again in Edinburgh, but yeah. now it seems to be sorted with 5,000 metres to go. That's his distance. When we look at uh, the athletes in second and third position, and that's Andy, Andy Vernon just edging away, you've got potentially not a can't cook, won't cook, but a won't be selected, can't be selected, because Vernon is by no means guaranteed to run because he wants to go to the States for the spring. And you've got Moomin Jeel, who's still Somalian and is awaiting British status, and that knocks a big hole in a, in a theoretical British team at this point, doesn't it? Yes, this is not only an inter counties championship, it's a world championship trial uh, for the senior men, senior women and the two junior under 20 age groups. But this is an astonishing piece of running. Now, this is really good stuff from uh, Mo Farah. He's come out here uh, with determination and uh, he's running it with, with that determination. He really is. No messing here. He's not going to be beaten today. No, that's well, a big gap. I think he's going to he's going to exceed Jessica Judd's record of the biggest winning margin of the day, albeit that he's got 8K more to play with. It's good to see him back like this because this is a Commonwealth Games year, but more importantly, it's a European Championship year. And he came within a whisker of winning the European Championship gold on the track in 2006. And I'm sure that that's the thing that's on his far horizon at the moment, that he gets a good winter rounded off and uh, hits the times on the track. He needs to. Great to have him as British number one, isn't he? Because he's a kind of flamboyant character, isn't he? He's a likeable bloke. He, he, he can compete with the best. He's not scared of anybody, but he just needs to be spot on. None of your iron deficiencies, none of your mucking about tactically. He just needs to be 100% Mo, and we're, we're fine. You see, it's quite breezy out there. The uh, tape being blown very strongly away, but this is uh, very much a time trial now. Although time's not significant, it's, it's, it's the manner in which the race is being run. And a little look over his shoulder there, and uh, he's run away from Andy Vernon. We didn't expect this. Well, further back down the field, there's several races in one. Trying to uh, just see the number there. I think, is that a Humberside vest? That's uh, Owen Flage of East Wales. That's the East w uh, Wales singlet in purple. We haven't seen a lot of them at the head of the field, but he's seen it through, selected for them. Highest rep representative honour if you're short of international, and uh, good on him. Meanwhile, look at the stride length here he's achieving on that flat part of the course, and there's not much of that flatness around this course, but uh, this is Mo Farah at his very best. This will have given him all the confidence in the world, it really will, uh, to go through to those uh, championships and to really attempt to get amongst the Africans because he, he, he's good enough if he can believe in himself and if he's right with just 4,000 metres to go. Yeah, he's, he's put himself in a situation here where he can relax. He's not looking back, he's not bothered. And uh, it, it was, it was uh, canny, the way that he ran the opening lap, because uh, he knew he'd got the extra gear on his bike that would bring him back into contention. But the way he's just uh, kept the hammer down since he got clear, not looking back, just giving himself that intensity of workout. I hope he does go to the World Cross. Um, I remember watching him in Mombasa when he broke through to top 10. Uh, he's got that pedigree and he, he, he can mix it. Yeah, he did well in hot and very, very humid, and he survived that one and did well. But that is a wonderful shot of a man at his very best. A it's man at the peak 
Oh, it's a, it's a great form. course as well, don't you think, Stuart? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, we're on to the last race. The course has held up. The, spectate, the, the spectating support has been tremendous. The athletes have uh, responded well. And I think this is, as a new home, like the crucible for snooker. I think, I think Crofton Park is going to be a good place for people to target their winters to in future. When you consider how well Andy Vernon has been running um, and the performances that he's had, then, you know, you've got to admire the performance that Mo Farah is putting in here. I mean, this is exceptional stuff. It really is. I mean, uh, to win the English National and to be this far behind a fella um, who really started, as you say, very, very steadily, built it, but what also impressed me was the manner in which he just simply put the pedal down and moved away. Yes. Um, it was it was something that you, when you're running behind a guy like that, I'm sure that it, it, it would be very worrying to think, now, hang on a minute, am I going to go, or I try to go, as Andy Vernon must have thought, or am I going to stay back and hope that he's gone too early? And you can see Mike Skinner in the background there in fourth place. Um, he leads, as I said, the McCain Challenge, along with Vernon. They're the two contenders. Yep. Uh, Mo's not involved in that. He's, uh, this is his real race over the country to establish himself and to establish his confidence and to go with the big one. The world's in bid gosh in a couple of weeks' time. I was thinking yesterday about the, the difference. I mean, they're very different physically runners and they've had a different kind of winter. Uh, and we, were, we tended to be very impressed with, with uh, Vernon running 7.49 indoors, as he did in, uh, at, at Birmingham last month. But, but Mo broke the British record. Mo's a 7.30 low uh, 3,000 indoor runner, so it is a different step again. So as long as he's at his best, he, he's a terrific athlete. You can see how windy it is now. That uh, was just a breeze early on in the day, but now as we get well into the afternoon, it's past 3 o'clock, it's, uh, it's getting very, very strong indeed. And when they come uh, from the bottom of the course to the top of the course, it's right in their faces. That's another little problem. But uh, Andy doesn't seem to have the edge, but this is a, a, a flowing uh, athlete, an athlete uh, totally in shape at the moment. There's no question about that at all. Remember, he's been to altitude, not just recently, I don't under I understand, but he's, he does like altitude, and he, he, he runs well off it as yeah, well. Yeah. He's a character, you know. I don't know if it's a well-known thing, but I think he's... Uh jumped off Richmond Bridge into the Thames during his off-season on a bit of a lad's night out. So he's quite a... He, he's one of the boys, and uh, but he pays his dues. He does the hard training. He goes off to Kenya without telly, without fast food, and, and lives, lives that Spartan lifestyle. So he does everything that you need to do to succeed at the highest level. He's into the last 3,000 metres. He's on his final circuit. It's the closest thing we've had today to a lap of honour. He could take his foot off the gas, but I think if he's serious about absolutely getting himself in uh, peak condition for for bid gosh and he's going to go there and lead the line for britain then he you know give, give it a go now I really, really I, keep pressing i think that's important to give it a go now i think it's important and he will know what he's got ahead of him in that uh, world uh, championship but on this sort of form then well uh, he could uh, he, he could challenge now this is the little sprint uh, that we know that andy vernon's got he's gone ahead of moomin jill jill who in fact was uh, second in the um uh, championships, the national championships, although, as you were saying, he needs to get that uh, visa through. He, that's coming through shortly, we understand, so he's got his uh, British citizenship. But Andy Vernon really had no answer to the, the sheer pace um, of... Uh, and there was a disguise in it, too. It just, yeah. it just moved away. And Andy now is running for second place. Um, and Moomin Jeel in third, and it looked as though it was Mike Skinner in fourth. Yeah, I mean, the, the point at which Mo kicked in here, I mean, physically he took his hat off, metaphorically he took the gloves off, didn't he? And that was the point where there was no turning back. Gilles seemed to have some sort of agreement to, to go with him, but has, has got no answer to this. The only thing that there may be on the horizon here, and, and perhaps it's something that Mark Richardson might ask him about, is that one of his training partners missed the English national for Mo Farah's stag night. That's how it was written which implies a wedding imminent. Ah. And I don't know what the gap between a stag and a, a, a wedding night is, but that could be this month. I'll tell you what, he's really put the pedal down here. He's moving very, very quickly indeed. And uh, I tell you, he's not coasting. He is really starting to move. Well, not starting to move, continuing to move pretty quickly now. Andy Vernon's got away from Moomin Jeel. But let's have a look at this gap. Let's move forward from Andy Vernon.